Hello guys. Today we're going to chat about a much requested topic, protein moisture balance. You guys had a ton of questions about this. So let's hop right into it. The first thing you have to understand is that hair is absorbent. When you are using your cleansers, conditioners, stylers, you're not just putting them on your hair, you're putting some of them in your hair. So it's important to understand what exactly you're using and how it affects how your hair behaves. I like to imagine it as a scale. There are two main types of ingredients in your hair products, protein and moisture. If you have a balance, your hair is happy. And this balance is affected by the products you use on a daily basis. If you've ever had a bad hair day and you couldn't figure out why, or if your favorite products suddenly stopped working for you, it's probably because your protein moisture balance was off. But hold up, what is protein and what is moisture? Let's take a step back. Let's start with protein. Protein is used in hair care to lend strength, elasticity, and shine. It can fill in gaps and weaker sections of the cuticle, and it contributes to the overall structure of your curls. Think of protein as adding stiffness. You need a certain amount of stiffness to keep the shape of your curls throughout the life of your wash. But how do you know whether or not a product has protein? For that, we're gonna look at the ingredients list. Keep an eye out for the following grains and veggies, such as quinoa, oat, rice, wheat, corn, and soy. Also look out for silk, keratin, the words hydrolyzed, amino acids, or peptides. So now that we know what ingredients to look out for, how do we know whether or not a product is high in protein? So just like food ingredients lists, cosmetics have their ingredients listed in the order of concentration. So products with protein higher on the list will be higher in protein. Let's look at a few examples. So here we have Briogeo Curl Charisma Gel. Would you say this product is high or low in protein? If you guessed high, you're correct. Here are all the protein ingredients in this gel. As you can see, there's a lot of them really high up on the ingredients list. Let's move on to another one. Here we have Shea Moisture Curl Smoothie. Is this high or low in protein? If you said low, you're correct. We only have silk protein in this product and it's not too high on the list. So if I needed more protein in my routine, this would not be the first thing I reach for. So how often do I use protein and how often should you be using it? My hair loves protein. I use it all the time. I have protein in some capacity in pretty much every single wash. How often should you be using it? Now that's up to you to figure out. I recommend taking a look at the products that you have in your shelf seeing how much protein they have in them, and doing some experimenting. I know some curlies like to use it every couple washes, every other wash, just depending on how their hair reacts to it. It really just comes down to experimenting. Of course, you can overdo it and use a little too much protein, which we'll get into a little bit later. But for now, let's talk about moisture. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. So as many of you have probably figured out already, curly hair is naturally drier than straight hair. Just because of the way the cuticle lays, it is much more susceptible to moisture loss. In comparison to straight hair, it is a lot harder for oil to travel down the hair shaft and seal in moisture within our strands. So typically products that are moisturizing are what you'd expect. You'll find it in conditioners, leave-ins, and creams. And even though it might be obvious that these products have moisture, it's still important to pay attention to the ingredients to see how moisturizing these products are and where different ingredients are falling on the ingredients list. So let's dig into some of the common moisturizing ingredients, starting with emollients. So these products form a film on the surface of the cuticle, smoothing it to seal in moisture and then add softness and shine. So some common emollients are fatty alcohols, which are not to be confused with drying alcohols. These are actually really good for your hair. Next, we have oils. So I'm sure everyone has experimented with one of these. Coconut and argan are some great examples. 
And last, we have butters such as shea butter and jojoba butter, which are some of the heaviest emollient ingredients. Next up, humectants. Humectants promote moisture retention by attracting water molecules, binding them to your hair, resulting in soft and bouncy curls. Common humectants are glycerin, propylene glycol, panthenol, agave, and honey. And finally, aloe. So aloe actually has both humectant and emollient properties and is a super common ingredient to find in curly hair products. So let's take a look at one of my favorite leave-ins, this one from Bounce Curl, to see how many moisturizing ingredients we can spot on this ingredients list. As you'll see, pretty much the entire thing is moisture. So remember, conditioners, leave-ins, creams, these are all meant to moisturize your hair, so the ingredients will reflect that. So how often do I use moisture? If you haven't gotten it already, it's in every product, in every single wash. Unlike protein, it's not necessarily an ingredient that you can choose to use. You're using it on a daily basis. Now you can choose to give yourself more, so every other week I do a deep conditioning treatment because I feel like that helps my curls stay hydrated. But no matter what, I'm conditioning every time I wash, I'm using a cream every time I style, so I can't escape it. Okay, now to make this a little more complicated, some products contain protein, and moisture. Let's take Cantu Curl Activator as an example. This product has protein in it, but look how low on the list it is. We can make an assumption that this is a low protein styler. In addition, there are tons of moisturizing ingredients in this product. If I felt that my hair needed more protein, I probably wouldn't reach for this product first. Now let's take a look at Bounce Curl Light Cream Gel. As you can see, we have some protein ingredients pretty high up, so we know that this is a pretty high protein styler. We also have some oils and glycerin, some moisturizing ingredients here, but relative to the amount of protein in this gel, I'm still gonna call this a high protein styler. So if my hair needed moisture, I wouldn't necessarily pick up this gel. So it's important to take a look at the products on your shelf, determine whether they're high or low in protein, and compare that to the amount of moisture in the product to get a good gauge of what the product will do for your hair. Alrighty, so let's get back to our scale. So in an ideal world, you could just use some protein and some moisture and be in perfect balance all the time, but it's not that simple. Every time you use a product, the balance of your hair shifts. This balance is especially affected by our stylers, the products that we leave on our hair. And if you don't pay attention to what your hair needs or the ingredients of the products that you're using, it's easy to throw your hair off balance. So let's look at a couple examples of what could happen when your hair gets off balance. So let's talk about what can happen when you use too much of either ingredient. Let's start with protein overload. So obviously this happens when you overdo protein-rich stylers and are not giving yourself enough moisture to compensate. Hair that has protein overload is typically stiff, frizzy, kind of brittle feeling. It won't stretch easily and it might feel like straw. So if you suspect that you have protein overload, I definitely recommend clarifying first, then doing some deep conditioning treatments and lightening up on your protein stylers for a bit. I don't necessarily recommend cutting them out completely, but I would use a lot less of them or rotate your stylers for a little bit. I'd also add in some more moisturizing stylers in the form of a leave-in or a cream. So here's a real life example from when I used too much protein. So I had used Bounce Curl Gel, which is pretty high protein over and over and over again without using anything underneath. And I had completely slacked on my deep conditioning. And so over time, my hair just became stiff, a little frizzier, and I tried refreshing with even more gel, which made it worse. And I was like, oh my God, I completely overdid it. So I did a ton of deep conditioning treatments, made sure that I was putting more cream under my gel and everything got a lot better. Now let's talk about over moisturization. So this is so easy to do as a curly girl, and I definitely believe it's way easier to do than protein overload. Curlies tend to think that adding more moisture is better, and that's definitely not always the case. I've gotten messages from people who use a leave-in, a cream, a mousse, another cream, and then a gel, and wonder why their hair is feeling limp and lifeless. It's because they're using way 
too much moisture. If you're just starting out, I recommend only using one moisturizing styler and a gel. So pick leave-in or a cream and then a gel and that's it. Because if you overdo it, you can over moisturize your hair. So what are the symptoms here? Over moisturized hair is going to be limp, lifeless, not really curling well at all. So how do you fix this? Number one, clarify. And then I would do a protein treatment. So my personal favorite is doing a rice water rinse. It's super easy and it has ingredients that you probably already have in your house meaning white rice and water, but you could also add in some more high protein stylers into your routine, making sure that it's present, especially within your gel. I think that protein works the best in like a strong hold styler and then really cutting back on some of the moisturizing ingredients. So say you do have a high protein gel, maybe going gel only for a couple washes just to see if you can bring your hair back to center. So here's an example of when my hair was over moisturized. So what I had done, which was so stupid, is I had deep conditioned and then I had conditioned again afterwards because I was like, why not? Let's try it. Nuh uh. My hair felt awful after that. It was really mushy. It kind of like always felt damp but it wasn't. So what I did is I made sure that I incorporated more high protein stylers into my routine and I cut back on a lot of the moisturizing ingredients that I was using until my hair got back to normal. So with protein and moisture overload, it's not gonna get better right away necessarily. It might take a couple washes, so just keep that in mind. And then another thing with both of these overload symptoms is that you have to keep an eye out for them. Typically, it's not happening overnight. It is something that develops over time. So if you pay attention to what you're using and what your hair needs, you can stop your hair from going to overload before it happens. So let's talk a little bit more about how we can achieve balance and how we can make sure that our hair doesn't get overloaded. As I mentioned, as you style in a typical week, your metaphorical scale will start to tip one way or the other. So let's give a real life example of how we might handle this. So say in a typical week, I might wash three times. And for two of those washes, I use Briogeo Curl Charisma Rice Amino and Quinoa Frizz Control Gel. So this gel, as we saw, is very high in protein. So by the end of the week, if I use this twice, my hair isn't going to be overloaded, but my metaphorical scale is just going to be a little bit tipped towards a tiny bit too much protein. It's not going to be bad. My hair is still going to look good, but my balance is just a little off. So how do I equalize this? Maybe at the end of the week, I use a deep conditioning treatment and then I bring myself back to baseline. Another thing I could do is just rotate my stylers. So maybe on the third wash of the week, I just don't use this and I use a gel that is a little bit lower in protein. So in both of those examples, I fix the problem before my hair became overloaded with protein. All right, so let's give another example. So say I wash a couple times with Cantu Curl Activator, which is very moisturizing and has a little bit of protein. And then I also use Aussie Instant Freeze, which does not have any protein at all. So if I use these a couple times, by the end of the week, my hair just might be slightly lacking in protein. So for my next wash, I might rotate my products and decide to use a high protein styler for one wash just to bring my hair back to baseline. So the best way to keep your hair in check is to really think about what you're doing to your hair in a typical week. Are you using a lot of protein? Are you using a lot of moisture? And how are you going to adjust for that? And then how you adjust just depends on what you like to do with your schedule. So say your favorite stylers are really low protein and very moisturizing. Maybe you do a rice water rinse every other week. I know a lot of curlies like to do it a couple times a month. Other curlies just prefer to rotate their products to get the best results because that's a little easier. Doing a rice water rinse takes a little bit of time. Some curlies, like myself, love using high protein stylers all the time. So what do I do? I deep condition once a week or every other week, depending just to keep my hair in check. So the goal should be to never let your hair get overloaded. Pay attention to what you're using, pay attention to how your hair is feeling and adjust as needed. I truly believe protein moisture balance is the key to unlocking consistent curly hair wash days and figuring out why your hair is acting the way that it is. If you're a visual person like me, keep imagining that scale in your head and kind of figure out when it's tipped one way or the other to make a change. So if you need a cheat sheet because you want to remember all of that info, screenshot this next slide.
Alrighty guys, so I hope this video was helpful. I purposefully did not give too many product recommendations because I do want to impart this knowledge of ingredient reading onto you guys. And hopefully you guys can kind of take this knowledge and use it throughout your curly journey because it really does make a difference. It makes it everything so much easier when you can look at the back of a bottle and figure out exactly what it's gonna do for your hair. So if you like this video, please feel free to subscribe. I'm hoping to work on a lot more content for you guys and if there's any topic that you guys would like to see me cover, leave me a comment down below. Until then, I'll see you guys soon. So if you need a little protein cheat sheet, cheat sheet, I can't say that, cheat sheet. So if you need a little protein cheat sheet, that is so hard to say, cheat sheet. Am I, is that just me? Anyway.